Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this uh, first webinar of uh, AI Sigma this year on AI clinic AI discovery. Um, so glad to have everybody here. Uh, we will start promptly at 12 o'clock. We won't wait for those who are late. <laughs> so uh, before I start, let me just give a quick self-introduction. So my name is Tempo. I'm the current assistant head of AI standards at AI Singapore. So previously, uh, I was from a non-IT background. So I joined AI Singapore under the AI Apprenticeship Program. And therefore, that's here I am. Um, I joined AI Singapore full-time as an assistant head here. Right. So later on, I'll be sharing more about the types of programs that AI Singapore has. Okay. So before we start, let me just do a quick recap of the objectives of this webinar. Right. So the purpose of this webinar is for us to share how the programs that have created especially on AI clinic and AI discovery, can help companies accelerate their AI adoptions and do it through multiple ways. Uh, first, we help companies to get inspired on relevant AI use cases specific to the functions and industry. We also help companies to ideate potential use cases that they can develop internally. And of course, for those companies who wish to embark further into developing their own internal AI capabilities or to collaborate with, Singap with AI Singapore to work on our AI projects, we have programs to support them as well. Okay, so before I have gone further, let me just uh, introduce, um, invite Lawrence Liu um, to give a short welcome address. Uh, Lawrence, please. Uh, thanks, thanks, Tempo. Uh, welcome everyone, and uh, I'd like to especially thank uh, William uh, from UPASO for, for um, joining us to share his experience working with uh, AI Singapore. Um, I won't take too much time. Um, just want to give a brief overview and, and why this session is uh, especially uh, important and relevant. Um, when AI Singapore started, one of the first programs we had was the 100 Experiments. Now, that, that's an expensive program uh, to, to participate uh, uh, in, uh, with AI Singapore, right? That's like uh, 180-250k co-investment required. Uh, so it was targeted really for uh, MNCs, uh, GLCs, large enterprises, and we do have SMEs and startups that participate in, in the 100E with us. Uh, but we also realized that um, we need to reach out to the SMEs. Uh, but today we have decided that uh, the, the term SME actually may not be a good way to categorize companies that we want to reach uh, to get them on board the AI journey like what uh, Tempo was uh, talking about. Um, so instead of that, um, internally we are now using terms like uh, whether the enterprise, so we, we rate enterprise in terms of AI majority, whether are they a novice, uh, whether are they uh, AI aware, whether are they AI uh, competent or AI proficient. Now the exact uh, terms and, 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 and how we, we define them, uh, Tempo will, will explain further uh, uh, in this presentation. So this AI clinic and AI discovery was really created, right? Uh, to, re to solve some of these uh, 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 issues that we encountered while trying to get companies to adopt AI. So along the way, we introduced uh, uh, AI clinics, AI discovery, and many, many other, other programs. So I hope today's session will give you an idea of, of uh, what uh, the clinics and the discovery process is. And uh, if there's you know, anyone with any other ideas how we can help you to, to get started on this AI journey, uh, we are more than, uh, you know, we'll welcome your, your input. Thanks. Back to you, Tempo. Okay, thanks, Lawrence. All right, so uh, this will be the agenda of the rest of this webinar. Uh, first, I'll just briefly go through um, who is AI Singapore, because I'm sure not everyone here heard of AI Singapore. Next, I'll just go through you what are the, the current challenges that we see when companies want to embark on our AI uh, journeys. So then we'll introduce how AI clinic and AI discovery can help support companies in their effort. And of course, we have uh, sharing by uh, UPASA. So we have done a project UPASA 
uh, he'll be sharing with us his experience and we'll end off with a QA. and a So uh, anytime for any questions, feel free to post it in the Q&A uh, chat. Uh, later on, I'll be answering them. Okay. So uh, intro introduction to AI Singapore. So uh, AI Singapore, um, we have started in uh, 2017 and our mission is really to anchor deep national capabilities right, and help create AI impact in Singapore. So it grew, we do this through multiple ways. Right? So we grow local talents. So we have a talents development programs. We also help to build an AI ecosystem in Singapore in order to put Singapore on the world map. Right? So uh, we are funded by the NRF, National Research Foundation, and our office is at uh, NUS. Right? And we have uh, multiple uh, program coordinating agencies, uh, as you can see on the left. And we also work across uh, different universities as well on the right. So this, this got a very good advantage because at any point of time, if there's any um, projects or technical expertise that is beyond AI Singapore, we can reach out to our network to get the help needed to support the companies in doing the AI projects. Okay, so um, AI Singapore, we have four main, uh, some four main activities. Uh, first, we have the AI research. So this pillar focuses more on uh, developing the latest uh, um, research algorithms uh, to serve and a specific area of interest identified. Right? We also have our AI technology. So under AI technology, we solve national grand challenges. So the most recent one that we have is the uh, AI in a healthcare grand challenge. Right? And um, today I'll be just focusing on these two, uh, AI innovation, uh, AI makerspace. So this is where I'm from. So uh, these two pillars are uh, what we do is that we go out to the industry and help companies to accelerate their AI adoptions. Right? And later on, I'll be going through with you what are some of the programs and then some of this pillar and how we can help you with that. Okay, so overview of AI simple activities, right? So again, um, we are agnostic to company size, right? Be it startups, SMEs, uh, large local enterprise or MMCs, right? Uh, as soon as the company wants to embark on the AI journey and they need help, AI Singapore will be there for them. Right. So we do it through multiple ways. We have a talent development programs if they wish to increase their employees' uh, ATI literacy. We have uh, things like 100 experiments, which I'll go through later on, to collaborate with the companies over 9 or 80 months uh, to help them develop an AI model uh, for their companies. Okay. So right now, I just set the overall context of why we have created um, AI clinic, AI discovery, and those programs that I mentioned earlier on. Okay. So through our experience in doing our, our AI projects with companies, uh, we realized that there are a few top challenges that companies face when they, they want to embark on AI journey. And this is consistent with our, um, some of the research article you read out there. So first, right, highlighted in uh, the blue is data scope or quality, um, skills or staff, understanding AI benefits and use cases, measuring the value and et cetera. So although there are multiple um, challenges faced by, we can briefly categorize them into five main areas. The first thing is, how do we find out the latest AI application specific to my industry or function? Right? Companies also come to us and say, how can we get started in AI at minimum cost and risk? Because not every company can afford to take the risk or the, the, the investment uh, required to get, to get started in AI. Okay. Some companies will come to us and say, okay, I'm interested in doing an AI projects, but there are so many use cases and for AI, there's so much potential. How do I ideate and identify use cases that my organization should pursue? Right. And lastly, how can I build my organizational AI capabilities? if they wish to deepen uh, their employee skills. Okay? So this is where we come up with multiple programs to address each of the concerns uh, that companies uh, surface to us. Right? To find out latest AI applications specific to the industry and functions, we have AI clinic, which I will go through later on. To help companies get started in AI at minimum cost and risk, 
we have developed this thing called AI Bricks. So these are free open source uh, AI solutions that we have created. So AI clinics and AI Bricks go hand in hand, which I'll go show later on as well. Lastly, for the uh, ideation and the prioritization of use cases, this is where AI discovery will come in to help the company to scope out uh, good use cases, good feasible use cases that they can invest in and can start in their AI uh, journey. And of course, for all, any organizations who require uh, AI engineering expertise, we have the 100 experiments along with our AI apprenticeship programs uh, and the AI data apprenticeship program, which I'll go through later on. Okay, so first, intro to AI clinic. So what is AI clinic and how do we go about doing that? Okay, so on a high level, this is the process of AI clinic. What we do is that based on our experience or based on requests that we receive from our clients or industry, we will try to identify a team or a specific industry or a functions that uh, we see that have a strong demand for AI. So it could be accountancy, uh, marine time, etc. So once we have identified a specific sectors, functions, or industry, we will then organize uh, an AI clinic that is very specific to the sectors, for example, uh, marine time that you want to target. What we will do then is that we will invite participants uh, from within the same sectors or industry then down to have roundtable discussions. So in the roundtable discussion, what we will do is that we will share the latest uh, AI applications specific to the industry. And the reason why I keep mentioning specific to the industry or uh, function is because uh, what we realize is that uh, a lot of times um, in the past, companies has been saying that you know, uh, it's good to share AI use cases, right? but these are all very high level and generic stuff. It is not possible for my companies to implement them. So that's why uh, for our AI clinic, we will tailor it specific do the functions. So after the participants attend our AI clinic, they'll go back with a list of potential uh, solutions that they could implement um, within um, their, their sectors that's relevant to them, right? And of course, uh, during the round table discussion, uh, the AI Singapore uh, consultants, AI consultants will be there as well to facilitate discussions, right? So sometimes uh, if our companies or participants have any questions they want to ask, we'll be there to address them and we could give some uh, advice as well. And at the same time, we we'll also share what are the use cases and applications uh, that's relevant to the industry. Okay, so one of the examples that we have done is this uh, AI clinic for maritime industry. So um, those who are interested, um, later on, uh, I, can I can share the links with you uh, after the workshop, uh, no issues. So this is available on YouTube. So we have done an AI clinic specific for the maritime industry. So um, in, in, that, um, in the AI clinic, we shared uh, multiple use cases that anyone in the maritime industry will find relevant and could implement uh, them internally. Okay. So earlier I mentioned about AI bricks and AI clinic. So how do these two gel together? Right? What we realize is that in uh, a lot of the industry engagement uh, or a lot of the companies we've spoken with, a lot of the use cases are not unique. They are in fact common use cases across industry. One such use cases is demand forecasting. A demand forecasting within a specific sector, let's say it could be uh, sales, is very similar to a demand forecasting um, uh, AI model in another functions, let's say uh, inventory, right? Uh, even though the, the data might be slightly different, but the, the approach and the methodology in terms of AI modeling is somewhat similar. Right. So what we do is that based on our insights from the industry engagement, uh, based on what companies have been coming to us, uh, what we do is that we identify a common denominator across the use cases. This is where we will come in with our AI expertise. We we'll develop our AI solutions specific for the industry. Right. So for example, one of the AI brick that we have developed is, thing called, is this uh, RPA, 
robotic process automation tool called Tech UI. So this is a free uh, open source um, AI bricks that we have developed for the industry. And you have multiple use cases in the libraries which you can check uh, by Googling uh, for AI Singapore website and search for Tech UI. Right? So this is uh, one such example on, of how we as AI Singapore can come up with a common uh, use cases that cut across uh, the industry okay, to help companies get started in AI. Okay? And how do we see uh, companies use the AI Singapore AI bricks, right? Uh, it might sound scary, right? You might say, hey, uh, Tempo, uh, it's good that AI Singapore have these AI bricks, but I don't know how to use it within my organizations or deploy it to uh, the, the, my stakeholders internally. So what we envision is this one. Right? Based on what we've collected uh, from the industry or what organizations share with us, we will identify a common denominator or common use cases. Once that is done, what we'll do is that we develop an AI solution and open source it, right? a free AI solutions put it on the internet. So companies who are more advanced, so when I say advanced, meaning that I'm talking about companies who are like are AI competent or AI proficient level. So how we group these companies is that, you know, these companies typically will have uh, internal uh, capabilities in terms of software engineering, in terms of uh, IT services. So for those companies who are very strong internally, I say for uh, AI competent and AI proficient uh, companies, right? um, they can take our model and deploy it internally. Right? Otherwise, for companies who lack the internal IT capabilities, such as uh, AI novice and AI aware companies. So for these companies, typically they might or might not have um, IT capabilities internally, and maybe their AI knowledge uh, might be lacking as well. So for these companies, what they can do then is that they can engage uh, IT uh, service providers, like uh, system integrators, to help to bring the model and integrate that into the existing workflows. Right? So when the user log in on their desktop, everything will be uh, integrated as a solution right? and they can use it to achieve their business objective. Right? So this is how AI Clinic and AI Bricks go hand in hand. Right? Through the AI Clinic, we help companies uh, to uh, get updated on what's the latest applications in the industry. And if there's any use cases that we see that that's keep reoccurring from our conversations with the industry, we will use our AI engineering expertise to develop a free solutions for the industry to adopt. Right? And different companies with different AI capabilities, they can go through different routes to adopt these AI solutions that we have created. So that is for AI Clinic and AI Bricks. Next, I go to AI Discovery. Right? So you can imagine that for companies who want to get started in AI quickly and uh, don't want to spend too much, um, um, uh, uh, don't want to risk a lot of their capitals or time in adopting AI, they can attend AI Clinic, use our AI Bricks and get started in AI. But how about for those companies who are, who, are, who are stronger in terms of the IT capabilities, uh, meaning let's say, for example, for AI proficient companies, uh, these are companies usually they have their in-house uh, AI engineering capabilities, for instance, or they have a very strong software engineering uh, capabilities in-house. And they will embark on something that's more customized, something that's more unique, or something that is very specific to their business needs but maybe they don't know how to ideate a good use cases to proceed forward. So this is where AI discovery can help. Okay. So through our multiple engagements with companies across sectors, across different sizes, um, what we realize is that there are three main mistakes when companies uh, made when they try to ideate AI use cases. First is that they de-minimize groupthink. So usually how the brainstorming works is that they gather uh, several stakeholders in the uh, same room and start to brainstorm about use cases, right? But what we realize is that a lot of the time, 
the most highly paid person in the room or the most senior person in the room, uh, once they uh, mention about use cases, the rest of the room will rapidly converge towards that use cases. Right? So end up, you know, there's no, there's not much uh, white space ideation around what could be possible. And worse still, right, a lot of the time, the person who might be the most vocal or the most uh, 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 extrovert who share the ideas, uh, the, their use cases that they share might not be the right use cases to pursue. Right? So this is the first mistakes that we see. The second mistake that we see is that the organization failed to align teams. right? So what happens is that for some of the organizations that I work with, halfway through the AI model development, someone somewhere in the company will say, hey, have you thought about this? Or have you thought about that? Have you considered this? This will happen if the stakeholders are not aligned when they are trying to identify and prioritize the use cases. Right? The last thing anybody wants is that halfway through the AI model development, uh, somebody say, have you thought about this? Then you know that some within the companies are not aligned in terms of the use cases to pursue. And the last thing that we all want is to abandon the projects and do a U-turn uh, to restart from fresh. Right? This would be costly and a waste a lot of time. Right? And lastly, the third most important point is they didn't engage a facilitator with AI expertise. Right? So why do I call this out? Right? AI is very different from traditional software. For traditional software, it's very easy to come up with a specific requirement. Let's say, for instance, I want the app to be able to store a photos, uh, to be able to have a search bar to search through photos, for instance. Right? So these are uh, this deterministic approach where you could come up with right at the start, right? because uh, software engineering, you can give a request that can build a function out of it. But for AI modeling, it's a totally opposite spectrum. Right? For AI use cases, a lot of the time, it's dependent on data. So whether a use case is doable, it's dependent on whether there is good, sufficient quality data to begin with. Okay. And AI is uh, probabilistic in nature. It's not as easy as putting a search bar and just code it out. AI learns from data, and without a good data on hand, the AI model cannot be developed. Right? So that is where uh, if uh, the facilitator is not well-versed in AI, to understand the technical challenges or the potential approach that an organization can take to idea the AI use cases, right? Then um, later on, when they proceed to do projects, that might be a few challenges uh, down the road. So what we have done is that uh, under AI discovery, uh, we took uh, the inspiration from uh, Design Sprint. So Design Sprint is not new. This is originated from Google Venture and they help uh, Google startups uh, under their incubation arms to uh, ideate use cases fast and test them out. Okay? But this process is more for software engineering. Okay? What we then do is that based on this, uh, this inspiration that we have, we separate out the different stages into three main areas. First, we have the ideation. So this is for companies who are interested in AI, but they are unsure where to get started. Right? Next, we have the prioritization. This is where uh, the companies have use cases identified, but they need help in prioritizing which one should they pursue first. And at the last stage, right, once they have prioritized the use cases, uh, if they lack internal capabilities to develop AI models. AI Singapore have these 100 experiments uh, to help them with that, which I'll go through in details later on. Okay, so first, AI discovery ideation. How this is, this is done? Um, this is a high level overview of how the workshop is conducted. Uh, so basically, in short, first, uh, I, I will be one of the main facilitators in the workshop. So how this social is done is that every participants, right, uh, stakeholders, uh, usually four to seven of them in a room will share their problem statements or the challenges uh, to each other. <clears throat> Let's say, for example, if this uh, organization is an uh, education uh, uh, organization right, in the space of uh, uh, training people, training institutions, right? So one of the problem statements that I face is that you know, someone mentioned you know, students are dropping out of courses due to loss of interest. So this 
problem statements, it's very hard to address, right? It's just a problem statement. So what we'll do is that we'll convert the problem statements into an opportunity areas. So for instance, right, someone within the participants will write, okay, based on what the colleague mentioned. So then this, uh, one of them might, might write this, right? How might we recommend suitable causes to students? So this will help to reframe the problem statements into an opportunity areas that um, the organization can pursue and address. Okay, so once that is done, uh, we have uh, defining goals and identify blockers. Uh, so these two will help the stakeholders within the room to align with internally of what they envision the organizations to become once the solution or the challenges is solved, right? We also want the participants to voice out the potential blockers that they think might derail the entire projects, right? So things like, uh, can we upgrade our IT infrastructure to be AI ready? Things like that, right? So this will be some of the potential blockers we want the, the participants to highlight up front, right? So hopefully through this, uh, there won't be anyone who come to you and say, have you thought about this halfway through the project? Right? So this last thing that we want. And the last thing is that we want the participants to search for inspiration to solve similar challenges. So a lot of the time, um, whatever problems that they have, uh, that could be another similar applications within the same industry or across industry. So for instance, uh, in the case of the airport conveyor belt, the luggage conveyor belt, right? the inspiration came from this engineer who visited a Japanese uh, sushi restaurants and they see this sushi on this uh, restaurant's conveyor belt. And with this inspiration, he applied it to the airport context, right? For the luggage conveyor belt. So similarly, right? A lot of times, a lot of the use cases, they could have similar applications out there, be it in the same industry or across the industry. We want the participants to go and find out, is there any similar applications? Right? And a good thing about this is that, right? A lot of the time when you share ideas, it's not uh, visible, it's abstract, right? Uh, a recommendation engine is abstract. But once the participants can show other people how might a solution look like, they become more concrete. And when the project goes to the development stage, the AI engineers can look at the solutions and try to understand you know, the key ideas uh, behind the solution, how should the solution functions look or even feel uh, to the stakeholders, right? So at the end of this uh, AI ideation workshop, we have these uh, examples being identified. Right? Let's say, for example, um, the opportunity areas identified is this three, like how many we identify skills that in demand uh, by the industry, how many recommend causes. We have the goal, we have the blockers, but uh, things like, can we attract and hire the right lecturers to teach new causes? And the key ideas to explore, let's say from LinkedIn, um, they have this um, job posting to identify in-demand skills, right? So these are the key ideas that uh, people can explore, right? So these are the artifacts at the end of the additions. Uh, this is just high level overview. I won't go through the, the details. For any companies who wish to uh, engage AI Singapore to run an uh, AI ideation workshop with you, uh, feel free to let us know. Okay. So at the next stage, this way we come to prioritization. So once you have a use cases, right, a list of them, how should you go about developing them or even prioritizing them to develop into an AI use cases? Okay. So this is where a prioritization workshop comes in. Right? So for instance, right, uh, one of the use cases identified is how might we recommend suitable causes to students? So this is an opportunity areas that the organizations has identified. So take note, this opportunity areas is not created by the AI facilitator, which is me, right? I'm there to facilitate and advise. These use cases or opportunity areas comes from the participants themselves, right? So uh, the participants will be brainstorming to identify such opportunity areas. So this will be relevant to the organizations. So before we proceed forward, what we will do is that the organization will share a sample data set with us, right? anonymized. 
We don't need to know the secrets of the business or how much money is the company making. All we need to know is whether or not the company has sufficient good quality data to solve the opportunity areas identified. Right. So uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, software engineering is very deterministic. You can say you want a website, you want a search box, and you have it. But for AI itself, it learns from data. Without good quality data, the AI model won't be good, even if we use the best in class algorithms to develop the solutions. And that's the reason why, before we proceed forward, you'll do a data assessment by our AI engineers, right? To advise companies how feasible this use cases is based on the data available. Okay, so once that is done, during the workshop, we will have a discussion with the stakeholders, right? To advise them uh, the use case of feasibility and the potential approach for AI model development, right? So uh, let me give you an example, right? Uh, what do you mean by potential approach? So this is where our recommendation will come in, right? So for instance, to solve this opportunity area of recommending suitable courses to students, right? There might be a few approaches. The first is, can we use unsupervised learning to group similar students together, right? So this is, for example, when the data set is unlabeled or there's no uh, proper tagging of data in the data sets. So this is one approach as an AI engineer we could take to solve the opportunity area. Another approach is, right, can do a supervised learning to recommend causes based on student profiles. So let's say, for example, in the data set, we realize that, hey, actually there's some uh, uh, data sets or uh, data columns that is related to the uh, student's um, uh, personalities or whatever there is, right? And that can give an indication of whether they're suitable for a specific course or not. Let's say maybe a more outgoing students will be more suitable for sales or marketing, for instance, right? Or it's simply not feasible to do it due to poor quality data, right? So these are the discussions that we're gonna have with the organizations before we embark on the projects, right? Because uh, if we identify the wrong approach, right? Then when we do the AI modeling at the outcome of it, the data, the model, uh, won't be suitable to fit into the uh, into the organization objective, right? So should we take an unsupervised approach? Should we take a supervised approach? Um, what might be the downside? Or how long might it take to develop the uh, AI solutions given the current best-in-class industry solutions uh, we have out there? So these are the, the discussions that we're going to have with the organization. So at the end of it, at the end of prioritization, what we will have is these three, uh, these three like use cases uh, that is being uh, mapped onto this importance and feasibility chart. So the business will advise us, you know, if this particular use cases is solved, how much value it will bring to the organization uh, in terms of, let's say, it could be a profit, it could be productivity, or whatever there is, right? So the organizations will let us know, okay? On the Y axis, importance on the business value, where should it be? AI Singapore engineers will advise the organization on the X axis, right? How feasible each use cases is based on the data that's available, the current best in class algorithms, right? And the technical challenges that might come to play when a specific use cases is uh, developed, right? So with this prioritization uh, matrix done, the organizations can go back and present it to the organization and say, okay, we have done the ideation. These are the three use cases. And through our discussion with the AI engineers, these are the ranking of the use cases that you should pursue. So let's pursue the top right-hand corner um, use cases, right? So in this way, we help the organizations to really identify and prioritize use cases for AI development. Okay. And some examples of the AI discovery which are done uh, by us, I can only show the picture. I can't name the companies due to NDA. So on the top left, right, we, we, there's a education institute who came to us right, and uh, tried to um, 
uh, find out how could they implement AI internally. Uh, right in the middle, we have this like uh, uh, retail com uh, this uh, MNCs that is uh, responsible for some car parts, right? So how could they implement AI internally as well? So of course, the top right, uh, this is where uh, there's a logistic company and you might guess it, right? We have a new parcel here with us today. So we have done an AI discovery with few parcel as well uh, on uh, helping them to implement AI internally, right? Uh, we also done things like um, uh, for a shipping companies and even for a dialysis company as well. Uh, you'd be surprised, right? Like uh, for, even for healthcare, uh, which is very specific and technical, uh, we are able to help the companies to identify good AI use cases to implement internally as well. So it's not just restricted to sales and marketing, even something as technical as uh, in the uh, medical world, we are able to help as well. Okay. And of course, right, once you have a prioritization, prioritization done, now you might ask, like, okay, all is good. Okay, right now I want to do uh, AI projects. How do I get started? I don't have any uh, AI engineers in place or, or I don't have any uh, capabilities in house. So what we have is this thing called the 100 experiments. Right? Under the 100 experiments, there are two paths to take. One is the for research. So this is for a use cases, which is so unique that there's no open source algorithms uh, out there to solve it, for instance. right? So this will require 18 months collaboration uh, between uh, AI Singapore, a principal investigator from uh, universities, and of course, the organization itself. Uh, but what? We have been seeing is that a lot of the use cases are in fact not that complex enough, right? To so, um, to warrant, let's say, eighteen months kind of research and a development effort. So, what most company will go under is this thing called the hundred experiment for industry. So, under this program, what AI Singapore will do is that um, on the AI Singapore side, we have a project manager, uh, AI engineers, and apprentices who are aspiring to become AI engineers or form a team and work together with the organizations over a nine months period to develop an AI model for them, right? So at the end of these nine months, what the company will receive is uh, uh, AI uh, minimum viable products. And of course, right, uh, the apprentices through the program, uh, they also graduate from the program. And if the organizations want to hire the apprentices who work on the project, they can do so as well, right? Since they are the one who have been working on the AI projects, and this will help to develop the organization AI capabilities. Um, the next question I have in mind is, okay, it's good, no? It must be very expensive, right? Perhaps you have talked to a lot of the consulting companies or other AI uh, vendors, right? Who might charge you uh, for nine months project durations, right? Maybe a few hundred thousand dollars or so, right? But under AI Singapore, uh, with the fundings from the National Research Foundation, right? Uh, we are able to co-fund the projects, right? So in terms of the cash outlay for the AI for industry, uh, you're looking at around uh, $70,000 to do the projects, right? So this is just a pop up figures. For any companies who are interested to find more about this, uh, feel free to uh, uh, contact us. We can share with you the specific details of uh, the commitment need to be pulled out by the organizations before we can work on these projects together. Okay. So some of the 100 experiments project that we have done with companies right, uh, is here. Right? So let's say, for example, in the top left, right, we have uh, done a, a project uh, uh, with, uh, with HDB Estate uh, Management Company. So it's on a predictive maintenance right, to help uh, predict whether a leaf is likely to break down or not in the next one week or so. Right. So this will help to give some insights and allow the town council to take some preventive actions right, before the lift breakdown. Uh, you also done a healthcare. So look using AI to look at the wounds conditions to predict uh, how likely you know, the wounds going to heal or there'll be any complications that develop. Right? So these are some of the 100 experiments that we have done across different industry from um, predictive maintenance of leaf all the way to uh, the healthcare. Uh, even for this, right? Uh, so this is a project that we have done, right? Uh, with a global AMC companies. Um, uh, and we help them to detect how likely these chips that they manufactured is likely to be returned to AI Singapore. 
right? uh, to return to IBM, sorry, not the ES Singapore, of course, return from their clients back to the companies who manufacture these chipsets. Right? So this helps to reduce uh, the, the cost that they incur. So these are some of it, um, the things that we have done uh, with uh, different companies in the industry. Right? So in summary, right? So this is the, the overview of what I have gone through earlier. Okay. On the left are all the challenges any company will face when they want to embark on their AI journey. Okay. Be it understanding what is out there specific to the industry or functions, uh, be it getting started in AI in a low risk and low cost manner, or even trying to identify uh, use cases for AI adoption internally and developing uh, the use cases into something that the organization wanna pursue, all the way to building the organization AI capabilities. We address every single changes upfront through our specific programs that we have developed. Okay. AI clinic, let me do a quick recap. It's a specific industry or a function team-based workshop where we invite companies to come down to have a round table discussion on what is possible within that. Uh, the functions and industry in terms of AI applications. And in the AI clinic as well, we'll be sharing what are some of the AI bricks or open source solutions or free solution, if you call it that way, uh, that can help the uh, participants in the workshop okay, to accelerate their AI adoptions, which they can implement in house okay, once they know how to use it. Okay? All the source code are available online. For companies who want something more customized, something more tailored, something that is more specific to the companies, we have AI discovery. This is where we will go in, help the companies run through an ideation workshop to explore the white spaces on what is pos possible. Right? And through that ideation workshop, right, by having the multiple stakeholders in a same room, um, so in the ideation workshop, there will be multiple voting rounds that we conduct, that we ask the stakeholders you know, to place their votes on, on which are the use cases they want to uh, prioritize and which are the use cases they want to ignore. Okay? So through the ideation workshop, we help to build alignment within the different uh, stakeholders in the same room. Right? So this will help avoid anybody come back to you and say, have you thought about this? Or have you considered this? Once you have the use cases, we will come in as well to do a data assessment in terms of whether whatever data that the organization has, is it even ready to do AI projects? Or what are the approaches that we, we could consider to solve a similar use cases, right? And right at the end, we have the 100 experiments right, together with our apprenticeship program where we train people to become AI engineers. Right? For organizations who wish to deepen their AI capabilities or need help to build customized solutions for the companies, we are able to support them as well. Right? So I uh, understand that in this uh, webinar, there's a diverse range of audience and companies. So you might be asking, okay, so for these five workshops, how would you recommend me to proceed forward? So this is what I would recommend. If we are an organization looking to uh, get started quickly with AI, in a low cost, low risk manner, uh, we have this thing called an AI clinic, an AI bricks, which can come in to get updated on the latest use cases and we'll share uh, what our AI solution is. Okay, With that, we can bring that in-house and deploy it internally okay, at a low cost, low risk, Manner. Okay, so this is recommended for organizations in the AI aware and AI novice uh, uh, category. So these organizations typically uh, doesn't have any uh, internal uh, strong AI capabilities and they're just looking to get started in AI. Okay. For an organizations who are more 
capable in terms of the AI capabilities or IT capabilities, then they can do uh, this pathway. They can attend our AI clinic, okay, and run through the AI discovery ideation. If at the end of the AI ideation, the use cases that they identified are solvable by AI bricks, we will recommend it to them and let them deploy it internally. If there's any use cases which is very unique and there's no available solutions out there, okay, we can help them do a prioritizations. And lastly, through our hardware experiments, help them build the customized AI models for them to uh, achieve their business objective. Okay, so this is how I would recommend our companies to engage us through the different workshops that we have. Okay, so this is the overview of our programs. I will go through it, uh, but most of them are, are just a two hours, two and a half hours commitment, except for, of course, the 100 experiments, where this is a nine or 18 months collaborations. Um, if anyone interested, I can share more details uh, on this. So at the end of this, uh, this webinar, I'll be sending uh, flyers to everyone who registered here, which will contain more information about these programs. So now, uh, enough of me talking alone. Uh, I would like to invite uh, William, uh, the CEO of UPASS, to come this talk. So uh, let me briefly introduce uh, William. So uh, William graduated from NUS uh, with double majors, right? And uh, he was managing uh, logistics and supply chains on major offshore companies, offshore marine companies, right? And um, from there, uh, he joined UPASS as the CEO. Uh, Right now, UPASSER is one of the largest on-demand delivery platform in Singapore. So he's responsible for growing new market segments and has expanded the operations to Malaysia. Right? And um, through the fireside chat, you'll be able to understand how we run the workshop together and how has UPASSER benefited uh, from the collaboration with uh, AI Singapore. Right? So, um, so let me invite William. Hi, William. Hello, everyone. Yeah, hey, really, hey, thanks for your time in joining us in this webinar. Appreciate your time on this. Yeah, and I appreciate everyone for yeah. staying here yeah. until so, lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so William, um, so before we start, right, uh, mm -hmm. could you just briefly explain to the audience what does you Parcel do? Oh, okay. Actually, you Parcel, uh is an on-demand uh, delivery platform. Uh, different from typical logistic company in which uh, we directly connect a, uh, the pickup location to the delivery location without going through like a centralized sorting. As you know, many of your loan be using force or others, right? Always go through like a pickup, which is the first mile, a centralized sorting, and then a last mile by batching the deliveries uh, um, together for the final destination, which we call the last mile. Uh, for us, we directly collect the uh, first mile to the, to the last mile uh, using a crowdsourced pool of, of drivers. Uh, currently, we, we have about uh, 12,000 uh, uh, drivers uh, that registered with us and uh, you know, doing deliveries uh, day to day. Yeah, okay. that's interesting. Thanks, William. So, um, uh, speaking on this, like, how do you come to know about AS Singapore and what makes you interested in collaborating with us? Oh, okay. Actually, uh, um, the, what, the first thing that we got interested with if, uh, uh, AI is actually through uh, some of the reading. I was reading uh, Master Algorithm, uh, uh, the book by, by Domingos Pedro. And then, you know, we're thinking, hey, where, where can I find more information? Then I was, you know, Googling and I realized that there was a, uh, in 2019, I remember that I went to uh, Tamasic Poly in which uh, uh, AI Singapore was doing a number of outreach event where physical event is still you know, possible. Uh, uh, there's also a few hundred participants, uh, participants uh, very much like everyone here today on a, on a uh, digital platform. So I attended the, the um, uh, seminar and was uh, very intrigued by, by the various uh, tools and how uh, you know, AI Singapore could help us to embark on the AI journey. And subsequently, uh, we contacted AI Singapore to, to understand uh, a bit more about uh, what, how can we uh, really get involved uh, understanding you know, our business model. Like what Tempo has mentioned, we send them over some of our, our data uh, to let them have a look at whether are we even ready you know, uh, on which type of program. Uh, and subsequently, we also even send our engineers uh, uh, on the AI for industry program. Uh, uh, to get them, um, you know, trained and certified uh, in in AI program. Uh, actually, two of them have already graduated uh, after about you know twelve months uh, being on the the training. Yeah. So at the height of the the pandemic is when we we pushed forward and went through the AI discovery uh, session. 
so very different is because we couldn't do it uh, 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 physically, right? So, so we held a, a digital um, uh, platform uh, session. So, so I was uh, really impressed with how AI Singapore came uh, very prepared, even, even though it was uh, uh, this uh, webinar sessions are pretty new uh, uh, with a number of tools uh, to really help us uh, uh, focus on what would be um, these priorities uh, for us and mark on and even like uh, areas like um, to avoid group thing, uh, the voting process was also uh, anonymous and you know, everyone was given a small mascot icon and you could, you could do voting across your, your, your different uh, uh, segments. Because we got our, our team from the operations team, uh, from the tech team and also from the management team to, to come in, uh, making sure that everyone uh, have a stake in it and no one person has a uh, unfair share or to, uh, to, to really you know, dominate the conversation. Yeah. I'm uh, glad that uh, the AI Discovery program helped you to build alignments within different functions. Uh, that's great. So maybe I can share with the audience uh, what was the, the AI project that we worked on together on that? Yeah. So uh, the AI project uh, that we worked on was um, uh, actually when the, uh, that's what we mentioned about when we are doing, you know, point-to-point -point delivery, right? And uh, uh, during the, the uh, pandemic, right, uh, actually we see a very huge growth for point-to-point -point because we deliver on the same day or even faster, you will get it within a couple of hours. Uh, but to achieve that, uh, when you have uh, a higher demand in terms of the delivery nodes as well as drivers, the number of uh, points that you can connect to uh, become uh, really exponential. So, so, so uh, we are you know, one of the largest platform and uh, like on platforms like Shopee, we are, we are doing all their same day deliveries. So it becomes very complex for us. Then we were, we were thinking of the challenge that, that we, we had uh, initially was uh, how can the drivers do more deliveries to increase our capacity, right? Uh, very much like just now the example of the how can, uh, why are students dropping out of the classes? Uh, this is a challenge. And, and then uh, uh, we look at what would be actually the, the solution, the recommendation. So we, we came on with a, a more narrow uh, uh, solution is actually how can we recommend uh, uh, drivers to do uh, jobs that are more suitable for them. Then we, we came down to the project in which um, we are looking at um, how do we you know, group the deliveries. Currently, our algorithm uh, uh, before the engagement with Air Singapore already uh, group the deliveries based on uh, delivery region or points. Uh, but we look at another side, which how can we also group uh, the collection points? Because as the number of delivery grow, uh, we need to first collect from, from someone, right? Like, like what I explained just now earlier on. After the collection, we need to do the delivery. So we also look at where are the collection points that are um, more effectively uh, optimized so that the drivers have you know, more time, uh, or actually uses less time to complete the, the deliveries uh, compared to a very rule-based, which uh, uh, a lot of uh, industry players are using. It's like rule-based is just based on like, say, are you in a certain uh, postal code? If our postal code is uh, this, you know, two or three digits, uh, it's being grouped together. But that's not good enough right? because it, it creates uh, artificial uh, boundaries uh, uh, around that and um, some two locations may be very close to them. So we, we switch to using an AI model that uses a distance-based uh, uh, kind of measurement. If two points are within a, a certain distance, um, they are being grouped together for collection and subsequently also grouped together for a delivery as well. Yeah, so, so, so that was the collaboration with AI Singapore. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks, thanks for uh, the kind words. So what are the, some of the improvement that you see in, for your business after you have uh, introduced the AI model into your uh, products? Ah, okay. So, so after the, the uh, uh, introduction, right? So we did some, some runs. The, the, uh, we could see visible improvement in terms of a, uh, a capacity improvement of the, the drivers. They could then you know pick up two nearby points delivering to the same region. Uh, that's that probably gave us about 20% uh, improvement in terms of productivity uh, of the drivers. And this is actually a very important part because the drivers on our platforms are uh, independent contractors, freelancers, right? So so uh, this increases their earning capacity, which then allows them to, to continue to participate in the platform uh, uh, to increase their their uh, earnings. Uh. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Uh, great to know that um, the AI model helps you 
help you uh, improve the, the productivity uh, internally in the organization and help the, the freelance drivers to deliver more products, right? So I think this is also one of the areas that uh, a lot of companies also wish to embark on. So especially uh, in this uh, special period, right, or uh, even a post normal, how can we actually help or stay competitive by using um, smarter solutions uh, powered by AI to help to to, to, to really increase the productivity and the, the revenue of the company side, right? because I think it's almost uh, impossible or even very hard to ask the driver to work like 10 hours more or, or of 10 hours or 20 hours more to make up for the delivery, right? So there has to be a, a smarter way of grouping the, the collection and then delivery and to optimize that, right? So that everybody will benefit, like right? both the, 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 the drivers, the freelance uh, drivers, as well as uh, you pass itself. Right? Yeah. So uh, maybe uh, just go to the last question, right? Uh, before we end off the, the fireside chat, right? So um, how, what, what advice do you want to share with the, the rest of the, uh, the SME's audience in this webinar? Okay. Actually, you have given them a lot of the, the advice on how to get <laughs> started already. I just want to share a bit on, uh, because many may think that, uh, you know, now is the pandemic, it's not really a good time. Should they invest in this? So uh, uh, I would say there's no really good or bad times. Uh, uh, you have to make the best out of the times uh, we, are, we are in right now. And uh, AI Singapore uh, uh, actually make the, the uh, solutions very accessible uh, uh, to, to everyone. And uh, from the piecemeal solutions that you can embark on uh, to really the, the bigger projects like 100E, you don't need to just straight away going into you know, 100E, which actually is not recommended. Right. You should really go through about uh, understanding solutions and quick wins that you could see the, the returns, uh, which is applicable for us. Right. So once you see that hey, actually by implementing such projects, you get quick wins and quick returns, uh, it gives you the confidence uh, to embark on a, a, a longer term project, uh, which we are looking at how to do things like uh, optimizing the routes, developing even a recommendation uh, engine uh, for the drivers that hey, you should, you know, because you, are, you have taken on job ABC, you should actually take on job D as well because mm -hmm. you are in the best position to take this. But it, it gives a whole new uh, uh, definition of AI uh, uh, by working with AI Singapore. So AI, everyone knows, stands, stands for artificial intelligence, right? But work, by working with AI Singapore, you also, uh, also bring AI to be accessible innovation uh, for everyone. Yeah, so, so that I will leave uh, everyone with this message. Okay, thanks William, thanks for sharing. So um, again, right, just to recap right, what I already mentioned earlier right, in, the, in the last questions, right? So AI Singapore really helped to take an organization right, from just thinking about doing AI all the way to actually doing AI. And through that process, we help you to minimize the risk through uh, a proper process that we put in place, right, such as the ideation, uh, the deprioritization to ensure that whatever projects that you embark on, uh, there is a, a, a AI engineers who have really looked through the use cases and looked through the data before we say that, okay, this is doable, right? Because otherwise, without this expertise uh, to help, uh, when you're halfway through the projects, right, um, you might realize that some of the use cases are not doable due to a lack of data, for instance, or this is not feasible due to the technical challenges you might incur, right? So with that, uh, thanks, uh, William. Uh, thanks for uh, joining us uh, in this uh, fireside chat to share with everyone uh, how was your experience in doing an AI project with uh, AI Singapore, right? So uh, again, uh, for anyone interested in uh, doing collection delivery, please go to a youth on website. Uh, and uh, they're, they're even featured on uh, the news, so right? you can Google for them, right? So they'll be interesting on what they are doing. Right? So with that, uh, thanks, William. Thanks for your time. Thank you. So now, right, what's next? So after all the sharing, right, what we'll do is that um, for AI Singapore side, we will send the AI client, AI discover fact sheets via email to all participants. Uh, of course, right, uh, if you're interested, uh, you can always uh, contact us at AI Singapore if your organizations uh, is interested in attending AI clinic, AI discovery, or just want to find out more about our program side, right? feel free to let us know. We'll be more than happy uh, to guide you along. And with that, I have come to the end of my uh, sharing. So right now, this is the Q&A section, right? So this is where um, I will look through the questions. Uh, maybe I'll just put it to here so everybody can see. <laughs> All right, so I'll just answer the questions from top to bottom. Uh, so please, if you have any questions which is unanswered, 
um, feel free to, to post it. This is the best time to, to clarify any doubts that you have. Uh, you can ask anything, it might not be specific to the, the clinics or the discovery, or just uh, very generic questions that you have on your mind when you think about AI. I would be more than happy to answer you. So great presentation. Okay, thanks. Uh, this session is recorded. Uh, so you'll be finding a way to share this. So definitely uh, uh, we will get back to you on this. So thanks for the kind words. Okay, so uh, on the second part here, are there any costs to the company during AI clinic, AI bricks and AI discovery stages? Okay, for the AI clinic, right, right now, uh, when we run it, uh, there's no charge or cost incurred. Uh, so we invite companies to come down we host a roundtable discussions uh, with the companies. So right now for AI Clinic, there's no charge. Uh, for AI Bricks, um, there's no charge as well. If your organization has the capabilities to take the AI Bricks and deploy it internally, right? So let's say for example, uh, if you are coming from uh, organizations who have uh, maybe uh, capabilities which are not as strong, in the IT area, right? Then uh, you can always engage uh, our partners, right? System integrators or IT solution providers to integrate that solutions into your uh, companies for you, right? Uh, and for the AI discovery, uh, as of this moment, um, there's no charges as well. Because again, right, um, uh, we are funded by the government and our, we are national program office set up to help companies embark on the, the AI journey side. Right? So tentatively, there's no charges as well for the AI discovery. But uh, feel free to engage us if you intend to do any of it. We will give you more details on that. Right? Okay. Um, how to participate in uh, AI clinic? Uh, okay, so for this, right, um, this is a both way thing because right now what we have, what we are doing right now is that we are trying to identify common needs within our industry or our functions before we organize a team-based workshop. Let's say it could be AI clinic for accountancy or AI clinic for uh, HR or sales and marketing, right? So it really depends on the demand out there and what we are seeing based on or hearing uh, based on our discussion with the companies. So if you are interested in attending AI clinic, right? Um, drop us an email, let us know. Your, your industry or functions you're coming from and what are the things that you have in mind. So once you consolidated, I say, uh, some requirements or demands from industry, we will do an air workshop, uh, uh, air clean workshop for that specific industry or, or sectors, right? And how many people will be attending, right? Uh, uh, this part, it depends. Of course, you want to have as many as possible uh, within the current uh, safety measures implemented by the government, right? And are they online? Um, so we are, so based on the past air clinics, we have done it online, uh, but we are trying to move to a physical workshop when possible, because what we realize is that it's only through the physical workshop interactions, right? Uh, the, the, the discussions uh, will be more fruitful for the, for the organizations, right? Because if we have 10 participants who unmute themselves and share at the same time, right? <laughs> the, 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 the discussion will be a mess, right? So uh, the best result is physical, but we are open to it virtually as well. Uh, so physically preferred, but virtual possible, it really depends on um, whatever safety measures uh, that the government have implemented and what we think is the most suitable uh, for, for that. Right. Okay. okay, thanks. Thanks for comments. Hi, Mr. Tenzin in session. How about the productive our failure from the session story earlier? Uh, productive failure stories. Uh, failure stories, uh, yes, we have, uh, we have a few, but they are not really failure stories. So, um, through the AI discovery, right? Uh, sometimes right, the outcome of it is, our recommendation to the company is, sorry, all your use cases identified, not doable due to poor data quality or poor data collection, or there's no data at all. <laughs> so then what we recommend to the company is, uh, either uh, you can explore other use cases, which might not be the top business priority, uh, which they might have data for, so that they can get started in AI. Or if the company stakeholders prefer, uh, they might say, okay, uh, thanks for helping us to identify the use cases. Uh, we will go back to start uh, 
uh, doing a proper data warehouse and to, uh, to start treating data as our asset, right? storing data properly, uh, ensuring that you know, they're error-free, things like that. So half a year, one year later, they can revisit uh, the use cases. And of course, I revisit AI Singapore, and this very will help them to do the uh, AI model development. So again, uh, the outcome of the discovery could be uh, there's insufficient data to do any of the use cases. But at least, at least, okay, please don't let this be, please don't let this be a discouragement for the companies who has been through the ideation, right? Even though they don't have any data, at least they are made aware of what are the top key use cases that they can pursue as an organization. Once you have identified use cases, let's say, for example, you want to recommend music to, to the subscribers, for instance, right? But you realize that there's no proper customer database. There's no proper uh, track history to track what the customers are playing uh, or listening to. But at least you have the use cases identified. So with that use cases as a central beacon or the ready point, you can get all the different organizations or divisions within the company to come together to collaborate and start to treat data as an asset, right? So you might have the sales and marketing side starting to share their data and collecting proper custom records. You might have, um, you might have the, the, the team from the production side coming together to start to track what are the songs that are the customers most listen to? So through the ideation, right, with the use cases as a as a ready point, you can get the entire organizations to come together uh, to embark on this journey. Because otherwise, without a good use cases, then how are you going to go to the sales and marketing or the, the customer service department and say, okay, we need to start an AI projects. If they ask, okay, so what are the data do you need? I say, uh, I don't know, but we need to start. Right? Then you are, the, the discussion is going nowhere, right? But with a use cases identified by the stakeholders, right? That would become a, 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 a center point for the entire organizations to proceed forward together, okay? So that would be the outcome of it. So I would say uh, there's no really failure stories. Uh, that is uh, whether an organization is ready or not for AI and how we can help them get started. Right? Uh, at least they can start to treat data as an asset and proceed forward from there. Okay, uh, okay sure. I can share that uh, AI maritime industry links uh, we feel on uh, after this. No problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, how do you ensure that we record quality data? Is there any measure standard follows? Yes. Uh, so on this, I, it's, it's a bit tricky because right, an organization can ask, there are so many data to collect, right? Everything, right? Temperature, humidity, customer data, even the steps that I take on a daily basis, right? So which are the data that is relevant to the use cases, right? So that's why um, for us to, to access which are the relevant data, we first need to determine what are the use cases first. So once you have the use cases, then you can identify what will be the relevant data needed to solve that use cases. Let's say, going back to the same example of a music recommendations, right? Uh, once you have identified that you want to recommend better music to customers, right? Then you can start to identify, okay, I will, might need customer data. I might need data related to uh, the uh, track play this, for example. So it's there, then you go deep into each of the data sets. Okay, let me look at the, the customer data sets, right? Uh, what are the data that you have on a customer, right? Maybe to your horror, when you are doing the, the, the subscription uh, sign up, right? You don't have the credit card, the, the maybe the, 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 the name, the profile age, right? That's it, right? So maybe we say, hey, actually we have good quality data on a customer, but it's insufficient. Could we gather more things like their occupations, their, uh, I don't know, their educations, uh, their gender, for instance? Uh, then this way you enrich your data sets, right? And in terms of recording quality data, right? Again, it is use case dependent, right? And the best, the best way to do that is that um, you have employees, uh, depending on your organization size, right? Let's say if you're a big organization, you could have a data governance. Uh, employees or office there who look at ensuring 
data collected is stored properly in a data warehouse and the data is free of glaring errors, right? Things like that. So someone who look over the quality data, the data quality that's collected, that is from a big organization's point of view. But let's say if your organization is small, uh, perhaps you could look at whether um, within each department, how is data being collected, right? And when the data is collected, is there anyone ensuring that the data is of sufficient quality before they maybe key into the, the Google sheet or upload into the data warehouse, if that's one, right? So a good way to ensure quality data is to treat data as an asset. And the best way to do this is to have someone uh, be a, a data steward uh, or someone uh, in the, within organizations or department to look at, uh, to ensure that the data collected is of sufficient standard. Uh, for metrics and standards, right, it depends because um, different data, different data type might have different standards or metrics that are to follow. If you're interested, uh, you can uh, drop me an email on this and I can elaborate, uh, have a further discussion with your organization or your department on this, right? Uh, okay, so thanks. How should you initially try an AI clean session first? Um, so you can drop the email, right? Depending on the, the stages, uh, your, your organization stages, the status, right? Let's say, for example, if you realize that hey, actually your organization is huge, uh, there's a lot of AI capabilities in house, and maybe the ideas you want to explore, you really have a use case in mind, but you want to explore whether there's other use cases, then maybe AI discovery will be the right route to take, then we, we can route you to that, right? But let's say if you come to us from a very small company point of view with, uh, um, with uh, maybe uh, not as strong uh, IT capabilities, then we can do an AI clinic with you to share uh, the use cases and maybe what are the available solutions out there. And if you have an AI bricks, we can share that with you as well in the workshop. And uh, from there, it's just straight up to whether um, the path that your company want to take, right? Do you want to go post it forward to, to, to do a customized model for your company or whatever that we shared in the AI clinic is sufficient, right? So um, drop us an email. We have a discussion further to understand uh, the maturity, uh, the AI, uh, in terms of the AI capabilities of our organizations and the use case you have in mind, then we'll be able to uh, point you to the right programs that we have in-house. Right. So I think that's all the questions uh, that I received. Uh, if there's no further questions, then uh, I have come to the end of my webinar uh, to share how AI Singapore, through our programs such as AI Clinic and AI Discovery, can help your organizations to embark on the AI journey okay, through our experience that we've engaged with multiple industry and companies or multiple use cases. Right? We want to help every company to get started in AI uh, if they're ready for it and uh, help every companies to realize the, the potential of AI. Right? So with that, I thank you for your time uh, and for staying back. Right now, I'm 12 minutes over 1 p.m. So thanks again for your time uh, here. And I wish you have a good weekend. Uh, hope to see you in one of the sessions that I'll be doing in future. Okay, have a nice day. Goodbye.